Hi, I'm Al, and on today's Summit Racing Quick Flix, I'm going to just touch on some of the basics of fuel system plumbing. Now, in our other Quick Flix videos, we've covered topics such as EFI versus carbureted mechanical versus electric fuel pumps. Now let's kind of tie it all together and talk about fuel systems in general and some of the best practices. First, I want to start with either the fuel tank or the fuel cell. Now, you want to, when you go and make a purchase of a fuel tank or a fuel cell, you want to make sure it's designed for the system that you're going to be installing in your vehicle. Now what type of systems are there, you ask? Well, there's two basic systems. There's either the return line system or the returnless. And I've gotten them kind of drawn out here and, and these are just uh, basic drawings. The returnless style, you start with your fuel tank and you're going to generally run your fuel through a pre-filter and then your fuel pump. Depending on the pump, you may run an additional filter and then if you need to, run it through a regulator. Now the fuel pressure is being generated by your pump and then obviously regulated by your fuel pressure regulator. It then is perfectly regulated for what your engine needs, whether it's EFI or carbureted. The fuel pressure then stops there and it causes a little more pressure on the fuel pump. So you want to make sure that the regulator and the fuel pump are close together in terms of PSI so that way you don't put too much pressure on the fuel pump itself. Now a return style system does exactly like it sounds. It returns the fuel back to the fuel tank. You have the fuel coming out of the fuel tank. Most of the time you're running it through a pre-filter. Then you run it through your pump, a second filter, and then you run it through your fuel pressure regulator. When you have that dialed in, the fuel then goes to your engine. Now any excess fuel that is created or delivered to the pressure regulator by your fuel pump is then returned back to your fuel tank. And you can see here on our fuel cell that we have two ports designed for a return style system. Now you can use a fuel cell like this in a returnless style system. You just want to make sure that you do plug up the second port. Other things that you'll notice on here is we're using straps. You always want to make sure that you use as much safety as possible with any type of fuel cell or fuel tank because we are dealing with fuel here. We don't need our fuel cell moving around on us. Also we have a vent here. You want to make sure that you do vent the excess vapors outside of the, uh, the vehicle. You don't want to have any vapors coming into the cab of your vehicle. So if you have either uh, you're racing and you have a door car or you know you have a show car, you want to make sure that the fuel cell or the fuel tank is in an, an enclosed area away from the driver's compartment. Now when you are running your fuel lines whether they're a braided line or, or steel or aluminum lines, you want to make sure when you do pass through steel that you're using some type of grommet. Uh, the reason why you want to use some type of grommet is to protect the hoses from rubbing up against the firewall or the, the body of the car in any way because that causing damage to a hose end up causing a leak end up causing problems for you down the road. So we have you know, several options of grommets and I'll in make sure I include a link down in the description below so you can find all the grommets that we have at summitracing.com. Now I mentioned hoses. We've talked a lot about making your own braided hose lines and there's different types of fittings that go on the end of the braided hose lines. I'll include the link to that video here. Uh, both to the Teflon braided hose lines as well as just the standard braided hose lines. Uh, what you can do is you can create your own custom hoses so that way you can run it from your fuel cell up to your filters to your fuel pump and up to your engine. 
You do want to make sure that those connections are secure so that way you're not leaking any fuel. If you find that uh, you want to use some sort of sealant, don't use the Teflon tape. That ends up getting into your fuel system, clogging up your fuel system, and can cause you some problems with fuel starvation later on down the road. Now, so one of the questions that we get every once in a while is asking us what type of fuel pump or what size fuel pump do I need for my application? Well, there's a little formula called the brake specific fuel consumption formula that you can use at home to help you get you in the right ballpark. Now, what it does is it sets some guidelines for naturally aspirated nitrous and forced induction. And it says naturally aspirated engines they use a factor of 0.45 to 0.55 pounds per horsepower per hour. Now, let's put that into use. Let's say you have a 300 horsepower small block street engine. Nice, tame little engine. So you take your 300 horsepower and you multiply it by your brake specific fuel consumption factor. Here, we're just choosing right in the middle of 0.5 and you get 150 pounds per hour. Now you know that fuel, gas, is about 6.2 pounds per gallon. So we take that 150 pounds per hour and divide it by 6.2 and we get 24.19 gallons per hour. So now we can take that 24.19 number, go on the summitracing.com website and look for a fuel pump that fits right into that range. Now remember, you can always go above and get a fuel pump that flows more fuel, but you don't want to get a fuel pump that flows less because you don't want to starve your engine. Now if you get a little crazy and you buy a 110 gallons per hour fuel pump, you can also get a fuel pressure regulator and regulate that flow back so that way you're not putting so much fuel into, let's say, your carbureted engine. However, if you have a fuel injected engine, give our Summit Racing Tech Line a call and they'll make sure you get everything dialed in perfectly. Now, if you have any other questions about fuel systems, fuel pumps, filters, any of that, please feel free to give us a call or leave a question in the comments section below. Remember to hit subscribe to stay up to date on our latest Summit Racing Quick Flicks videos and watch our other videos. Thanks for watching.